the city of Montreal in Canada. It's home to Buckminster Fuller's famous geodesic dome, as well as this futuristic Olympic sports stadium. Immigrants from all over the world have been welcomed here, and the province of Quebec prides itself on its open-minded attitudes. Montreal's a city that welcomes innovation, but now it's becoming the focus of a global debate on one of the most significant ethical conundrums ever to confront the world. It's the issue of human cloning, and the province is home to some of its most dedicated proponents. I don't think we should allow it to manifest where it's actually cloned as a, as a human. Just the cells itself may be a benefit, but not, uh, not to the point where there's a person like yourself or myself living among us. Perhaps it could be a bit dangerous. It depends on which way you use it. If it's to make something like the Hitler Youth or to make Superman or erase all diversity, that strikes me as being a bit bad. But now it's for medical reasons, for stem cells, it's not the same thing. But human cloning, which makes the same person several times, that's creating a dangerously thin line. There's so many uh, disastrous things that come up, can come about from somebody doing this with a bad uh, motive and I think this the fear of having a world of people that are robots. In 1996 a Scottish research team cloned Dolly the sheep from a single adult cell. The creation of Jean the cloned cow followed in the United States a year later. And the following year, scientists were able to monitor the progress of Dolly's healthy lamb, Bonnie, conceived by natural insemination with Welsh ram, David. The fertile Dolly has since developed premature arthritis. But the anthropomorphic naming of cuddly clones only helps to obscure what's really happening. Scientists around the world are making significant progress in the attempt to create human life in the lab. There's hope that genetically modified pigs will provide organ banks for transplants. Dr. Bridget Boisselier is cloning humans. We are dealing with human reproduction and we are preparing embryos in a laboratory uh, that is included in the clinic and this is located in a place where it's perfectly legal to do it. So that's the background. Uh, we do have six scientists working full time. Um, we have experts who are associated to us but are not linked to us by any financial thing. They are just experts who are looking at what we're doing in the sense that they will be our witnesses uh, when, when we just publish and when, when we open that to the public. So we have very healthy blastocysts and we hope to present the baby uh, to the press and, and to the world, uh, a very healthy one soon. Among the volunteer surrogate mothers for human clones are these young devotees of the Raelian sect. I always wanted a baby, but you know, the problem of overpopulation and, and it's a dedication for 20 years, which is too long because I want to do so much for others. If I dedicate myself to one kid, I won't be able to help all the one that needs help right now. And, and then, then mom, my mother, she's a Dr. Boisselier and she was working on it for a while. And then I grew up and it was time for me where my body starts feeling I want a kid. And I thought that having a kid, like if it's for science, if it's for the whole humanity, and if it's for a couple who are infertile and want a kid, and then I could have that kid, I could have the experience of being pregnant, which I really want to go through, and, and I won't have to keep the kid. Simplement, uh... Basically, one day I heard of this new technique of cloning. And then I understood they needed surrogate mothers. I simply put myself forward as a volunteer candidate. I'm going to help science bring a child into the world. I'm going to carry the child for nine months, and at the end of the nine months, I'm going to give it back. Well, the scientists and me are going to return the child to its parents who made that request. About a two and a half hour drive straight into the rural heartland lies a bizarre theme park named UFOland. There, in what claims to be the largest straw bale construction in the world, 
lies the headquarters of the Raelian religion. Closed to tourists for winter and entries by appointment only. The deserted corridors are illuminated by stained glass windows that give an insight into the thinking of this unusual cult. It was founded in France in the early 1970s and now claims 55,000 members worldwide. Expelled from his native France, former racing car driver and journalist Raël now has his base in Canada. It's his ambition to build the structure shown in this model near Jerusalem. Its purpose? To welcome the alien race which inspired his interest in human cloning. The flying saucer is apparently a full-scale replica of the one he originally witnessed in a volcano in France. Raël first inspired Dr. Boisselier, a disciple, to develop research into human cloning. He founded CloneAid and believes cloning is the way to an eternal life where we'll eventually transfer our memories and personalities into adult replicas. I was the first on the earth to say cloning, human cloning is coming very soon. That was 28 years ago, uh, after the encounter with this very advanced civilization from space, the Elohim, which uh, whose name in, is in the Bible, and it's, they are the creators of life on earth. They came on the earth, a very advanced civilization, long time ago. They came on the earth, built big laboratories, and inside these laboratories, using DNA and genetic uh, engineering, they did create all life on Earth. An apartment in the famous Habitat 67 building in Montreal is the home of one of the world's leading theorists on the ethics of human cloning. Margaret Somerville is a professor at the McGill Centre for Medicine, Ethics and Law. She remains sceptical. I actually believe most strongly it's not in our interest because of what I would call uh, a secular, sacred attitude to the transmission of human life, that human life is not just a product, that there is something... Uh, I, I, there's no avoiding the word mystical. We need a new secular language to replace our old religious language. But there is something extraordinary um, about the handing on of life. The fact that unless you're cloned, there never has ever in the world, or unless you've got an identical twin, but let's leave that out of it, there's never been anybody genetically identical to you and there never will be in the future unless somebody clones you. And so part of our sense that we've always had that there's something unique and special and wonderful and mysterious about the fact that you, do, you are here, you do have this life, it's a limited time and that's it. I mean, we risk losing all of those senses. 90% of Canadians oppose the creation of cloned children. But these Raelian surrogates believe humanity will genetically engineer itself into the image of intergalactic aliens. And it's possible they may succeed quite soon.